Today's video has been made possible by The Great Courses Plus, an on-demand video learning service that gives you access to some of the best courses, lectures, and documentaries. Stick around until the end to find out more about today's great offer. Greek mythology is full of insane monsters, epic battles, courageous heroes, and ruthless gods, which resulted in some pretty gruesome and awful punishments. Being a king in ancient Greece in no way made you exempt from punishment. In fact, many of these stories today involved kings who overstepped their boundaries and showed a little too much hubris. King Ixion is a prime example of why you should maybe stay on Zeus's good side. When he married his wife, he promised to give his father-in-law a substantial gift that is often known as the bride price. Once married, Ixion went back on his word and refused to pay. His father-in-law then stole some horses from Ixion to even the score. However, Ixion wouldn't allow his father-in-law to have the final say and so he plotted his revenge, inviting his father-in-law to a feast. When he arrived, Ixion pushed his father-in-law into a pit of burning coals. Murdering a guest in ancient Greece was considered one of the worst crimes one could commit, and so he was exiled by the neighbouring kings who refused to absolve him of this crime. He was left to wander alone until he was driven insane. Of all those who could have taken pity on Ixion, Funnily enough, it was Zeus who invited him to a feast with the gods. Rather than showing gratitude towards Zeus, Ixion began to lust for Hera, and Zeus did what any loving, caring husband would do. He created a cloud in the shape of his wife and tricked Ixion into impregnating this cloud. Seeing this betrayal, Zeus struck Ixion from the heavens with a bolt of lightning. Hermes was then ordered to bind him to a burning wheel that would spin across the heavens for eternity. Another king invited to dine with the gods was King Tantalus. He also disregarded the hospitality Zeus had shown, choosing to steal ambrosia and nectar to take back to his people, as well as sharing some of the gods' secrets. As if this wasn't bad enough, Tantalus would continue to test the gods. In order to repay the hospitality shown to him, he would invite the gods to a feast of his own. He wanted to know if the stories of the gods were true, whether they could hear and see everything, or in this case whether they could tell what they were eating was forbidden. And so Tantalus killed his own son and served him to the gods. This plan was largely a failure as all the gods except one knew something wasn't quite right about their meal. Demeter, who was absent-minded, still worrying about the disappearance of her daughter, paid little attention and ate the boy's shoulder. When the true contents of the meal were revealed, the gods were furious. First of all, Zeus ordered the fates to bring the boy back to life. By boiling the chopped up body parts, they were able to reform him. His missing shoulder was replaced by an ivory prosthetic made by Hephaestus. Zeus then turned his attention to Tantalus, who at this point certainly deserved whatever punishment was coming his way. He was placed in a pool of water, Above him hung the branches of a fruit tree. Whenever he reached out to grab a piece of fruit, the branches would raise ever so slightly just out of his reach. Whenever he bent down to take a drink of water, it would also recede just out of his reach. Tantalus was given the gift of immortality, but in this case it was very much a curse. For eternity he would feel a hunger that could never be satisfied a thirst that could never be quenched, an ever-present reminder of the dangers of temptation. 
Eternal hunger is a punishment we see again with King Erisicton for his crimes against nature. Erisicton ordered all of the trees in a grove to be cut down. The issue was this grove was the sacred grove of the goddess Demeter. The king wanted to cut down the very last tree with his own hands, and in doing so he killed a nymph who in her last breath cursed him. Demeter hearing this call summoned Limos, the spirit and goddess of starvation and insatiable hunger. She placed herself in Erisicton's stomach, and so began his torment. He felt hunger like never before. Every time he ate, the hunger only grew. He sold everything he owned just to buy more food, and even then, it wasn't enough. With no money and no food, the king began to devour himself. By sunrise, there was nothing left. Secrets being revealed by kings happened more than you may think. King Sisyphus revealed the location of a nymph who was being hidden from her father by Zeus. As punishment, Zeus ordered Thanatos to chain him in Tartarus. However, the king was able to trick Thanatos. By asking him to demonstrate how his magical chains worked, Sisyphus was able to trap Thanatos in his own chains and escape his punishment. With Thanatos in chains and unable to perform his duties, this meant nobody on earth could die, which to many may not be an issue. But if you happen to be, let's say, the god of war, and you are now stuck in endless battles where no side could win, you can see how Ares may have taken exception to this. Ares found Thanatos and freed him from his chains, making sure Sisyphus completed his journey to the underworld. Once there, he was made to push an enormous boulder up an endless hill. Hades enchanted the boulder to roll back down to the bottom whenever Sisyphus felt like it was nearing the top. The true punishment was not the physical strain on his body. Sisyphus considered himself an intelligent man, enough so he felt he could challenge or outwit the gods. Resigning him to an eternity of this pointless, mundane activity for eternity only led to frustration, and over time it became maddening. Eventually, he lost the thing he valued the most. His mind. The last king on today's list is King Minos, who definitely suffered one of the more peculiar punishments. When Minos made his claim to the throne, he prayed to Poseidon to show him a sign that he was the rightful king of Crete. Poseidon responded by sending a white bull from the ocean. To show his gratitude, Minos swore to sacrifice the bull in Poseidon's name. However, he had grown rather attached to this bull, and when the time came, he sacrificed another in its place. This angered Poseidon. The bull he sent was special, and he was not about to be tricked and disrespected with the offering of an ordinary animal. If Minos loved this bull so much, then so would his wife Pasiphae. Poseidon cursed her with a burning passion for the bull. It grew so bad that she made the inventor Daedalus create a wooden cow so she could climb inside and mate with the bull. If having your wife fall in love with a bull wasn't enough of a punishment, she became pregnant and gave birth to the Minotaur, which would terrorize and plague the island of Crete. A rather common theme or punishment in Greek mythology is transfiguration or metamorphosis, altering or transforming someone into something else. In this case, usually an animal or something grotesque. An example many will be familiar with is Medusa, but even then, this is a rather contentious topic. If you go by the story that appears in Ovid's Metamorphoses, which is very much the Roman version, then yes, Athena transformed Medusa into a snakehead monster as punishment for defiling her temple. In response to this story, you have versions where Athena transformed Medusa into a gorgon in order to give her the means to protect herself. There is also the very common belief that Medusa was born a Gorgon. Ovid takes a very similar approach to Athena involving the story of Arachne, a talented weaver who is transformed into a spider. 
In a competition with Athena, Arachne creates a tapestry that is perceived as disrespectful to the gods. In Ovid's Metamorphoses, Athena defends her father's name, beating and shaming Arachne until no one would ever want to buy her tapestries again. Arachne then chooses to take her own life, and Athena transforms her into a spider, a warning or lesson against hubris. In the alternative version, it is Zeus himself who takes offence to this tapestry and forbids Arachne from ever weaving again. When she takes her life this time, Athena transforms her into the very first spider, so that she may continue creating beautiful tapestries in the form of a spider web. These two stories are a matter of perspective. You can view them as a punishment or a gift, neither is wrong. The same can be said for the story of Lamia. Originally a Libyan queen, Lamia fell in love with Zeus, and this ended poorly when Hera found out about the affair. She tricked Lamia into eating her own children and drove her insane, before eventually transforming her into a monster who could never rest. Again, there is another version of this story where the transformation is done by Zeus. He does so so she can seek revenge upon those who exiled her and took away her crown. There are some other examples of transfiguration and metamorphosis that are far less ambiguous. Actaeon was a hunter who stumbled across Artemis while bathing in a spring. When her handmaidens alerted her of the hunter who stood there staring, she wasn't too happy. Before he could explain himself, he was silenced by Artemis, who told him he was not to make another sound, otherwise she would transform him into a stag. Upon hearing the sound of his hunting dogs, he called out to silence them, and in doing so he had cursed himself. Actaeon ran through the forest trying to escape his fate, but it was already too late. The transformation process was almost complete. The irony of this punishment is that once he was fully transformed, he was hunted down and torn to pieces by his hunting dogs, who he had trained for that very purpose. Artemis appears again in a similar story, but this time it's a boy called Cypriotes who stumbles across her bathing in the woods. The boy is given a choice. He can either be transformed into a girl, or he can just die, which admittedly isn't much of a choice. Needless to say, Cypriotes chose the option that did not involve death, and so he became one of Artemis' many followers. Some other victims of transfiguration worthy of a mention include a young man named Achilios, who challenged Aphrodite to a beauty contest and lost, resulting in him being transformed into a shark. There is also Kiloni, a nymph who Hermes transformed into a tortoise for being too lazy to attend the wedding of Zeus and Hera. Out of the many punishments we've discussed today, which do you think was the worst? There are of course many we haven't discussed, and if you think any of those are worthy of a mention, then let me know in the comment section. As we mentioned at the start of the video, it's sponsors like The Great Courses Plus that make this content possible. I'm sure at this point we're all pretty used to on-demand subscription services. Netflix, Disney Plus, and so on. The Great Courses Plus is fairly similar, but instead of feeling bad after binging 12 hours of an awful TV show out of boredom, you can be productive and learn something new. There is a vast catalogue of lectures, courses, and documentaries taught by Ivy League professors and other fascinating individuals. The topics range from finance, fitness, food, and travel, to history, philosophy, science, and literature, so there should be something there to tickle everyone's fancy. You can stream The Great Courses Plus from your TV, tablet, laptop, or phone, whichever you prefer. If it's about space or dinosaurs, then I'm normally interested, but The Great Courses Plus does give me an extra resource when it comes to researching video ideas and coming up with new topics. If you enjoy Greek mythology and other ancient religions, then I suggest you try The Pagan World. If that sounds good, you can start your free trial today by visiting thegreatcoursesplus.com slash mythology, or by simply clicking on the link in the description. So give it a try and let me know if you learn anything particularly interesting. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.